Welcome back everybody, I'm Joshua Becker and I release one video a week here on my YouTube channel. Today, we're continuing through a series I call Seven Life-Changing Strategies to Change Your Spending Habits. If you missed the first video where I introduced this series and presented the first strategy, be sure to check it out. This is a series designed to be watched in order and considered deliberately in order to fully embrace and apply each step to change our spending habits and ultimately overcome consumerism in our lives. Today, we're diving into two more important strategies. So let's start with number two, find the culprit. If we wanna overcome consumerism in our lives, it needs to be about more than resisting advertisements or using willpower to say no the next time we pass a clearance rack in the store. To overcome consumerism effectively, we need to understand why we feel compelled to overbuy in the first place. So this step, find the culprit, is all about looking inward and asking ourselves what inside of us is responding to these external triggers. Sure, we live in a consumeristic culture bombarded by about 5,000 advertisements every single day, each one cleverly crafted to convince us that buying their product will somehow make our lives better or happier or easier. And they don't sell us on mere facts about their product. I mean, when was the last time you saw an ad listing only the features or the dimensions of a product? Almost never. Marketers compel us to buy with proven persuasion techniques, and we would be wise to recognize them and notice them. Let me share a story that perfectly illustrates this point. A while back, a lady going through my uncluttered course shared an experience with me. She had received a mailer from a makeup company saying this, you can never own enough shades of eyeshadow. She told me before the course, I probably would have agreed. You just never know when you might need a certain color. But I just threw out a dozen unused eyeshadow containers last week. The idea that you can never have enough is absurd. I'm living proof and I'm beginning to question every message I see on advertisements. And she's right. But of course, while these ads are influential, they're not the only reason we end up buying more than we need. We can't just blame ads for our overspending. No marketing campaign or ad executive, no matter how persuasive they are, physically drives you to the store or makes you click to ship online. We make those decisions. Somehow, the messages we see connect with something inside of us and compel us to overbuy. So what is driving them? If we are ever going to fully find the reason why we overbuy, we must journey inward to search our heart and our soul to understand our internal triggers. Is it boredom, loneliness, discontentment? Are we trying to impress others, trying to fit in, validate our success, just trying to alleviate stress in our life? It's something different for each of us. Now, I'll warn you, uncovering these triggers isn't easy. It's a deep, sometimes very uncomfortable journey into our psyche. And we don't always like what we learn about ourselves, but it is absolutely essential. Because only by identifying these inner motivations can we start to address them and truly change our spending habits going forward. So let's move to some practical steps. How do we start uncovering these motivations and culprits? Here are three things you can do this week. Number one, reflect deeply. Take some quiet time to reflect on your recent purchases 
Ask yourself, what was I feeling or thinking when I made these purchases? Was I seeking comfort, trying to relieve stress, impress others, or something else? And be honest with yourself. Step number two, journal your observations. Start a journal, and every time you feel the urge to buy something, write down what you were doing, what time of day it was, even what your emotions or thoughts were at the moment. And over time, you'll start to see patterns emerge, revealing your triggers. And number three, if you feel comfortable, discuss this with a trusted friend. Sometimes talking things out can provide clarity. And so share your journey with a friend. Tell them you're working hard to stop spending money on buying things that you don't need. Discuss what you've discovered about your buying habits and why you think you overbuy in the first place. A wise, trusted friend who loves you might even be able to offer new insights and help solidify your understanding of yourself. So strategy number two to change our shopping habits, find the culprit is all about introspection and understanding. It's not just about what we buy, but why we buy. And by doing this work, we lay the foundation for lasting change in our relationship with consumerism. Now, let's transition into a third strategy in our journey to change our spending habits. And I call this one limit input. This strategy is about taking control over the advertisements we expose ourselves to. While it's impossible to avoid all advertisements, we do have a say in many of them, especially those we encounter in our daily routines like television and email. So let's talk television first. The less TV we watch, the less we're exposed to a world of consumerism. TV, including streaming services, are packed with commercials and product placements. Even shows without explicit advertisements subtly influence us by glamorizing certain lifestyles. My grandpa, who lived through the Great Depression and passed away just before turning 100, once shared a profound insight with me. I asked him what life was like for him growing up in America and if he thought America was more consumeristic today than when he was growing up. Oh yes, of course, he said. So I followed up, well, why do you think that is? And with barely a moment of hesitation, he said this. Television. He believed television significantly contributed to today's consumer culture because it has the power to glamorize anything it wants to glamorize. Shows like Lifestyles of the Rich and Famous and movies that glamorize wealth are perfect examples of this. They show the glitz and the glamour, the luxury cars, the sprawling mansions, the big houses, the nice neighborhoods, but never the maintenance costs, the upkeep, or the emptiness that might lurk behind those shiny, luxurious, fancy facades. If you want to change your shopping habits, try reducing your TV consumption. I guarantee as you watch less, you'll find your desire to consume and spend lessens. The second part of limiting input deals with our email inboxes. How many promotional emails do we get from stores and brands every single day? Each one is a temptation, a prompt to buy something we probably don't need. The solution? Unsubscribe. Limit input. I know it can feel overwhelming if your inbox is already flooded. But taking this step is absolutely crucial in cutting down the noise of consumerism. As you unsubscribe from these emails, you not only declutter your inbox, but also your thoughts and your mindset and what you think about almost every day. Start with one email 
scroll down to the bottom and hit unsubscribe. Repeat this with every promotional email you get, and you'll soon notice the barrage of buying temptations start to diminish. So here are your two practical steps for strategy number three. Number one, reduce TV watching. Set a goal to cut down your TV time this week. You don't have to get rid of it entirely, although that might actually be easier. Instead, you could just choose one evening or you could cut down your time by one show every day, something like that. But make a plan then to do something instead of television. Replace it with reading, spending time with your family, pursuing a hobby. Notice if almost immediately you spend less time shopping as you watch less television. And number two, this week, unsubscribe from retail emails. Take a few minutes every day to unsubscribe from promotional emails. Start with the most frequent ones and work your way down, scroll to the bottom and hit unsubscribe every single time. After just a few days of consistently unsubscribing, you'll notice a big difference and the project will become more manageable for you. By embracing strategies number two and number three, we don't just tackle the symptoms of consumerism, the constant buying and accumulating. And we're not trying to find some super helpful life hack or trick that helps us out when we're in the aisle at a department store. We're addressing the very roots of our desire, analyzing what messages and emotions and discontent prompt our shopping habits in the first place. And so we're taking back control choosing what messages we see and making intentional decisions about our consumption. Thank you for joining me on this journey. Remember, change doesn't happen overnight, which is why we're spending time to focus deep on each of these strategies. Every step we take is a move towards a more intentional life, and my hope is that all of us can experience the freedom and joy and opportunity that comes when we change our shopping habits and overcome consumerism. Next time, we will explore strategies number four and number five. So don't forget to subscribe and turn on notifications so you don't miss out. See you again real soon.